if you were to ask me what really struck me most about the very early days of the college, I'd actually say it was the sense of excitement. It was almost like there was a set of excitement bubbling underneath, as though we somehow intuitively understood that we were doing something really interesting and innovative. The whole campus was bush and uh, you know it's like things always were in those days when you opened a new building or new school that it, it was you know bush and a building sat on it and then from there on you worried about your paths and roads. The roadway up to the college was also unsealed so that was rather dangerous in very wet weather particularly going downhill. There were 320 I think uh, students in primary uh, they were alphabetically listed. Um, 1A primary was all the Abbots and Andrews and all the A's. Um, and if you were Zykowski, you were 1H. I suppose in terms of uh, general attitudes, it was like a big, friendly high school. There were very close relationships between staff and students. I can recall college camps existed from year one and the initial one was in November of 1969 but we've always got to know our students well and there's always a concern for student welfare. On these trips the students saw me in a different light we just mixed more informally and that's all about it. In the early days the students called their lecturers by Mr or Miss or Doctor but on these trips, I was just plain Betty to these students, or in fact, lots of times, just Smithy, and I didn't mind that at all. I played myself in the uh, College Australian Rules football team. I was Ruckman there, and I also played in the uh, College cricket team. So there was a kind of bond between staff and students that uh, you don't really see to the same extent today. Quite a few of our students were from country areas, away from home for the first time and I was the person I think they could just come and talk to about various matters, not only their academic work but their personal life too. Betty Smith, uh, she was the Dean of Women and we were a partnership in a sense because she was looking after the, the female, the welfare of females in the institution. Well, naturally it fell to me to look after them, the males. And to be truthful, I think Betty looked after them as well. She was a very popular lady. The social functions were excellent. We had all sorts of functions, uh, social events. Uh, some people who were science lecturers turned out to be excellent pianists. All sorts of people wanting to get up and sing who were lecturers in other areas. The phys ed staff were always good dancers and put the rest of us to shame. We had wine bottling. The wine was pretty dreadful. The uh, bottling was completely unhygienic. But on the other hand, the afternoon was incredibly successful. And the, the highlight of the year was the, the breaking up day assembly, because on that day someone would come from the education department with all the appointments to schools for the following year. And all the students and all the staff would listen as names were called out and uh, there'd be snorts of derision and catcalls as someone was uh, pointed to Upper Whoop Whoop Creek and uh, everyone felt sympathetic for those who ended up uh, drawing the short straw. But it was a, a very close, almost a family uh, community because it was so small. There were some really exciting things going on. And I put a lot of that back to Andy Nimmo because I think what he did was two really important things. The first was he picked the staff he wanted to pick. The second thing is he brought a few older people over that he really trusted. And nobody contradicted what Andy wanted to do. He was good, he was innovative, he was courageous. He had the kind of influence and power within the Department of Education that allowed us to build something to his image. I look back now and wonder how he had the insight to do what he did because the 70s were exceptionally exciting times for the campus and there is no doubt that Andy created the environment that enabled that to happen. Dr Bill Hall was the director of the campus in the Macrovac College of Advanced Education times and he had an interest in research. 
I understand he also had a very interesting sideline interest, which was uh, antique furniture. So he was an innovator and a pioneer. And I'd say he was a very colourful person, but a very contributing and innovative um, director. People on the campus were very supportive of becoming part of Griffith University. And I think a large part of that was because of the research culture of, of being in a university, where research could become central to our work. So it's really quite a different faculty from the kind of faculty it was in those days. Special education dates right back to the beginnings of the Mount Gravatt campus. So back almost 40 years um, was when uh, special education uh, started out and uh, I think it's probably fair to say it's been a flagship program for, uh, for the, this campus and for this university now uh, for all that time. I think the strength of our special education program has always been the strong links that have been made between the theory and the practice. There has been an emphasis on an evidence base, um, a research base, and that strategy base for working with a diverse range of kids with special needs. One of the, the prime trainers of special educators in the state, in fact in the nation, so we would have a reputation up there with the best of, uh, of those in the country. I still enjoy coming up the hill every day. I don't see a great deal of difference from when I came up the hill in 1975. And I find it just as satisfying, only different, working with undergraduates and postgraduates who want to, in and of themselves, go out and be very effective in working with children, families and schools in improving the quality of life for, for students and for families with special needs. So, yes. I, I'm as passionate and committed now um, as I was in the past. Here at Mount Gravatt we train primary music specialists as well as secondary music specialists and now over the last five, six years we train instrumental music teachers who go into schools, especially into Education Queensland, to teach instrumental music in the schools. Um, yes, we still use traditional instruments, even those little recorders which have been used uh, for many years but we also now have uh, a great digital arts lab where a lot of the work is done in there as well. I'm the convener of the international education programs and the new initiative that the Mount Gravatt campus has is providing articulation programs for the Canadian college students. In education they can come over here and do a Bachelor of Arts in Education. For those who want to continue study they're able to stay on for one more year and do a graduate diploma of education primary and that qualifies them as teachers so they can then seek work back in Canada or in fact around the world. So it's a very exciting new development in education here at Mount Gravatt campus. Coast campus is the most recent campus, so the buildings here are relatively new. So too is the School Lean of Education and Professional Studies. I think what makes it different, it's the growing campus, so there are a lot of students who are choosing to come to this campus because of that newness. And also we have a strong or a large uh, Canadian cohort here, so our Canadian students choose to come to the Gold Coast region and uh, many of them are uh, completing masters in teaching in either primary or in secondary programs. So that gives us a unique kind of uh, profile on the coast. I think that because it's got the Gold Coast lifestyle surrounding it, I think it's actually attracted a lot more casual type of uh, atmosphere, but in saying that it still has a high level of expectations from our students. And there is a degree of professionalism that we expect students to have as they come in, and it's fully supported by the staff here and it's an expectation that students are professional in their approach and they are actually quite relaxed but it is fantastic to see them coming through and uh, implementing a lot of that professionalism in their careers. Today I've got the first years and we're working with a video clip, Mr President by Pink, looking at the semiotics of it so that someone looking at the, the audio, the gestural, and then we all come back and share that together, so what they could find in that clip. 
Multiliteracies is more than one mode of communication in the text. So they're looking at, besides the print-based text, they're looking at the visuals, the, the audio, the gestures, the spatial, all those things. So they all fit together to make it multiliteracies. So that when these students go out to schools on prax, they will take some of this knowledge with them and hopefully show some of the teachers on, on using multiliteracies in the classroom. And it's great that Mount Gravatt is celebrating its 40th anniversary because there's a long tradition of making a significant contribution to our community, not just our Queensland community, but our Australian and international communities. I was a member of the virtual faculty that started the Griffith Honours College, and these are our best and brightest. Uh, they said about 18 months, but I'm hoping to complete it earlier. That's the aim. The so graduates from Griffith have played a major role in educating students who have become future leaders globally around the world. So this underpins to me my philosophy around teaching, that it's the most important profession on the planet. I try to develop relationships with my students which are positive around the cognitive, social, emotional and spiritual levels. In that respect, teaching is such a broad area which requires so many um, different hats to put on and to be successful you have to be, go beyond just teaching content and actually uh, address the students' individual needs. The Logan campus was set up 11 years ago, designed to pick up on that corridor between Brisbane and the Gold Coast. Griffith is very fortunate to be uh, in that Logan region because the city and the surrounding areas are quite diverse in the nature of its population. A very strong Pacifica population, indigenous population and people who are refugees from Africa. The uh, mix of ages is an important dimension for Logan. We have about 50% mature age students and their wisdom and wide experience of life is a lovely match to the youthfulness and the uh, recency of school experience for those who've just left Year 12. One of the major points of difference about Logan is that it actually has cows on the campus and they occasionally break through the fence and stand at the doors and watch them open and close and we wonder whether they'll travel down the corridor at any time. But importantly, we have a course which is double degree. We have a primary degree for the bulk of the students, but some elect to do a double degree in human services and in primary teaching. One of the exciting initiatives that have come out of Logan has been the work of Dr Judith Carney. She has worked with local school children and elders in the Samoan community to develop a set of readers. This gives children an opportunity to develop artwork, to illustrate the readers, and to read material in their own language. So they're bilingual in nature. That initiative has been picked up by other schools on the North Coast, and indeed now those readers are being transferred into electronic media so that they can be accessed on the web. Our outreach into the community is really important. We have a number of ways of reaching into the community. One of them is particularly targeting students who have not probably thought about coming to uni. And so we do some mentoring with our, our own students who have reached that point and go out with the schools and say, hey, you can come to uni. It's something you might like to consider doing. Griffith generally has a philosophy, a mission in fact, of social justice and it's particularly so in education. In the research centre here, that is the basis of our work. We look at social disadvantage and ways that we can intervene in that to close the gap and most of the research that we conduct does produce practical outcomes in that manner. We look at disadvantage across the lifespan and so we have researchers working for example in early childhood looking at early intervention into children with autism. We have then some projects looking at youth transition, particularly youth who are at risk and we're looking at mature age workers and the sorts of knowledges and competencies they need, they report they need to stay in work. Applied Linguistics is an academic discipline that looks at language and how language is used. And the main areas of research that I do are in conversation analysis, uh, which is looking at how people talk together. And so some of that work is with um, 
Indigenous Australians, so we do field work up in the Northern Territory. You know, it's an Indigenous community and uh, we're looking at language in the classroom there. We're really trying to say, uh, is there a kind of cultural divide between the Indigenous kids and the mainly uh, white European teachers? Now my um, area of interest is uh, Australian history, the shared reality of these histories, you know, the class of cultures. And there's a lot of stories that should be told. We need to embrace uh, Aboriginal people within this history of this country. There's a shared history, and it's a history that should be told. Today we're now included in the preamble of the Australian Constitution. However, we need to take that step further and inscribe us on the body of history. A bit like how Aboriginal people inscribe their history on their bodies. And we need to do this. We need to do it so that we feel good about the contribution we've made to Australia. This is the first university in Australia to offer a degree in applied theatre and the first faculty which is looking at the use of theatre for other purposes, usually social justice agendas which this school is very strong with. So we have students who work with refugee populations, we have people like myself who've worked with adult survivors of institutional abuse. We've got students at the moment working in the valley with homeless people, working in the hospital, so lots of different contexts where theatre is being used for some purpose beyond entertainment. Riding at the edge of my Cacophony. Lush lips. These are the theatre direction students and they're both applied theatre students and drama education students who are starting to direct and rehearse the plays they will stage publicly in about eight weeks time. The students work together, the education students and the applied theatre students work together and work with each other and learn from each other. The applied theatre is, is a very new and unique program to Griffith but as well as that uh, our drama teaching program has been more and more successful and we're busy taking over the schools in Queensland and elsewhere with our drama teachers. Because of our international reputation in the field of drama we were invited to form a partnership with the Hong Kong Art School to offer a Master of Drama Education. So each year our staff members travel to Hong Kong and we implement a Master of Drama Education. The students in Hong Kong graduate with a Griffith degree, which they're very excited about, uh, and they have all of the access to Griffith's fabulous resources. Uh, we hope that a lot of non-Western theatre can be um, learned by our applied theatre students here so that they don't become so culturally narrow in their knowledge of applied theatre and enhance our program as well to make sure that our students have a broader understanding of world theatre. And uh, we're very excited by that connection. The best part, the best part of my job has been to work with the students and I go away, <laughs> I go home a very happy person at the end of the day because I get energised from the energy of, of um, my students. I think our students at Griffith University, our education of our young people is in really good hands. I was born in North Queensland and I guess I'll talk um, most directly about my work with first years in the faculty first years who want to be English teachers mainly. And I love that because a lot of our students come from families who haven't been to university before and uh, much, I guess, like I was. And um, I get a huge amount of satisfaction out of seeing them develop and um, enthus become enthusiastic for the profession. In a sense, it's the beginning of a new era. Life does begin at 40, in my view, for the college, the, it's very forward planning now. Um, we have a vision for the future in terms of shaping futures. It's certainly not as though we're banking on our laurels, but in my view, the foundations that we've put down over 40 years are, are, are very, very strong and will serve us well into the future. In 1985, I came to this institution hoping to have a conversation with mainstream. 
Griffith University has given me the skills, uh, the self-esteem and the encouragement to continue my grandfather's conversation and I see in the future um, that we're going to have more of that conversation uh, and we'll actually be going along hand in hand instead of an arm around picking me up and walking with me. Um, it'll be that shared relationship on respect and the tolerance. We have new understandings about knowledge, about learning, about the needs of students in the 21st century. We're looking increasingly at the relationship of creativity, analytic and evaluative skills, and of course working to develop communication practices in new ways, new uses of technology. So it's not hard to stay energised in the profession, especially when you're working with such a wonderful group of people who constitute the staff of Griffith Education. I'd like to send a message to all who have worked in this wonderful Faculty of Education as we celebrate the 40 years. We started with a very strong boutique campus here. We've extended to Logan uh, and the Gold Coast, of course. I just want to assure everybody that I feel that the strength that's currently here, both in research, learning and teaching, and the wonderful engagement with our communities, with our schools, with the profession, with the vet sector, with early childhood, to all those education sectors, I think that that relationship will get stronger in the future. I expect it will, and I'm sure it is. So congratulations on the 40-year anniversary. Onwards and upwards, and ever better.